Today we're going to take a look at the sixth best performing stock on the S&P this year, Market Access. The $13 billion electronic bond trading platform is changing the way Wall Street trades fixed income. Non-banks and investors are increasingly using the digital marketplace to trade treasuries and corporate credit with average daily volume increasing almost 50 percent year over year in the second quarter. That's over $2 billion a day. Joining me now is the CEO and founder of Market Access, Rick McVeigh. Rick, a well, pleasure. Thanks for joining me. Good morning, Alex. Happy to be here. So, 50% growth uh, so far. What kind of growth we see next year? Well, it's uh, we've seen very consistent growth really over 10 years. We've had compound uh, growth rates of trading volumes of about 23% over the last 10 years. What we're seeing now is the race toward trading automation by both dealers and investors mm -hmm. uh, because they're seeing the lower cost benefits of trading automation. So dealers are moving to algo-generated market making and investors are moving to auto execution. So that's what's driving this accelerated growth right now, and we're optimistic that will continue. So where, like money markets, treasuries, corporate credit, like high yield IG in the US versus Europe, like what areas are you seeing the biggest increase? You're, you're really seeing it across the board. Uh, we focus primarily on credit markets. So uh, what we're seeing on the market access system specifically is in high grade corporate bonds, high yield, and to a certain extent even EM. Hmm. Uh, so there is this focus on getting trading costs down uh, and that's driving the focus on technology improvement in the transaction process. So if you sort of game theory your business out, like how much percentage of electronic corporate cr tr trading is going to happen? I, uh, as optimistic as anyone, that we'll see much higher levels of electronic trading across fixed income in the years ahead. 50-50. Our largest market today is uh, high-grade corporate bonds. In the quarter that we just completed, we were about 20% of the overall market. I think it can reach 50% in the years ahead. High yield emerging markets are even lower levels today, closer to 12, 13 percent. Uh, so when you see investors and dealers both moving in the same direction, it gives me confidence that the share numbers will continue to grow. So when you wind up having things like zero percent fees at E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, all, all of that, like how does that conversation like move your business like what, what, is there a line you can draw with me here I th well I think that uh, uh, everyone is attracted to moving to low, lower cost models and so they uh, have to then go on electronic trading to do that is that the idea it's a little different in fixed income because uh, we don't have a commission structure in fixed income it's an over-the-counter mm -hmm. market so the transaction fees are in the bid offer spread but investors are hypersensitive to transaction costs because lower transaction costs create higher portfolio returns for their investors and the highest returning funds uh, uh, draw in the, the new assets. So there's a ton of focus on transaction costs in the industry right now. Uh, well, sort of the big conversation uh, in the trading platform was the years-long review the Treasury Department did on how much they're going to show in terms of, say, volume and price. Volume, they're all about telling you how much volume is yeah. trading, but not the price. Where do you stand on this? I'm a little bit surprised, to tell you the truth, because uh, we're big fans of price transparency in bond markets. Uh, we think it creates a fair market for everyone. It introduces new market participants and it ultimately uh, moves transaction costs down. So uh, I th we're happy that they took the first step and I buy the argument that the uh, recently issued or on the run treasury bonds do have plenty of transparency today. Mm -hmm. But there are a whole series of off the run or older issues that don't have transparency. But, but what about the argument that, oh, well, then I'm not going to trade a big block or then I'm not going to be able to trade these less liquid or older uh, bonds? Like, what is that argument not real or what do well, you think? Well, uh, certainly if you use the experience of uh, corporate bonds, I think liquidity has gotten better over time mm -hmm. uh, because of the importance of drawing in new market participants. Uh, so we're, we believe that more transparency will lead to lower transaction costs, not the other way around. We're happy to see the volume data, but we hope that uh, the Treasury will follow with, with price data in the same way that FINRA did with corporate bond and high yield data starting in 2002. So walk me out then, it's like a macro view here. So if we at any point wind up getting higher yields from central yeah. banks and higher rates, um, and we wind up seeing a move say into other uh, asset classes or even back into treasuries, like what do you think that's gonna do for the volume of trading, for your business? How do you think of something like you that? You know, uh, we're gonna go through a variety of interest rate cycles over time and we're at a very low point in yields around the world now. Uh, fixed income will still be a very important part of lots of portfolios from 
insurance companies to ETFs to pension funds to endowments. Does it change your growth rate? Like instead of 50% growth rate, like it goes to 20. Like what do you Oddly think? Oddly enough, we've done better in difficult market conditions mm -hmm. because people really flock to market access as a center for liquidity when times are more challenging. Uh, so the fourth quarter last year was a good example of that. Uh, so we actually do better if credit spreads are widening and, mm -hmm. and uh, yields are increasing. So that environment would actually be good for us. Uh, so because you're a CEO and you run a very successful company in the U.S. and it's a very popular stock, like what's your view on what's your biggest risk? Like what keeps you up at night right now? Well, we, you know, we, uh, we, have, we built in a lot of growth expectations. So we're working very hard to sustain that growth for a long period of time. And we think we're doing all the right things. We're investing very heavily in trading automation tools for our clients. We're expanding to new, new and large markets, uh, continue to expand in EM. Uh, we're acquiring a company in the U.S. government bond space uh, liquidity edge this quarter. So we just have to keep investing, and we're very confident that, that our growth rates are sustainable. And that hasn't pa paired back. You haven't paired back any of your CapEx plans due to that we've actually We've actually been increasing our investment because we're so enthused by what we see as the adoption rates by dealers and investors toward more electronic trading.